on March 2nd, 2014, in Brooklyn, New York, there was a Netrunner tournament. It was the 20-sided store, store championships. This is round four of four rounds. Coming into this match, there were a lot of players with one loss. I was one of them. I am on the right. My opponent is on the left. He also has one loss on the day. I think there was maybe three other players with only one loss going into this round. What happened? My Kate deck. His NBN, The World Is Yours. There was a slight issue here. Um, I noticed that he drew six cards um, immediately, right? Like, including his mandatory draw pre-Mulligan. So I was like, hey, um, are you... I guess you're keeping and starting already? And he was like, oh, no, I'm going to mulligan. So I'm like, oh, well, that's, you know, that's your, that's your mulligan there. You, go, <laughs> you don't get to see six cards, you know, so that's all right. He draws five cards and he plays. I'm also going to do a lot of shuffling and draw some cards. You'll see both of us have previously been to store championships. Uh, the 20 at uh, the complete strategist there. That's why we got those... Wotan playmats. You know, I like my black playmat better. I mean, the art on this one is much better than the Vitruvius one, but it's still, I'd prefer the black to this artwork. Uh, however, this, the actual physical, like, texture of this playmat is vastly superior to my $8 Amazon one, which is the reason I will use it, despite the fact that I prefer the matte black uh, coloring. But also, the black makes it easier to see what's going on in video. Using this, trying to use the red dye to keep track of my opponent's clicks um, when they're running. Let's we'll see how long I can keep doing that. It's hard to concentrate. He blows the sweep, sweep. Oh, I'm also sorry that um, in this video, the table is sort of off to the right a bit. I think the, the tripod got bumped uh, before I pushed record or something. So, sorry about that. You can still see the whole game. If you couldn't see the whole game, I would even post this video. Um... And it's actually slightly beneficial because you can see my opponent's hands. So that gives you... A, you can't see mine, though. which uh, You can't see much of it. Gives you a slight insight into, into what's going on here. So you sweep, 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 sweep. Defend R&D with an ice. I'm just going to go for HQ. Dirty Laundry HQ. Wall static. Okay. Get the money. Now I'm going to do something that I've been doing a lot lately, which is Data Sucker. I mean, <laughs> SMC into Data Sucker, right? Now, that's going to cost me three credits because I you, I, you lost Kate's ability when, for the turn when I installed the self-modifying code. Um, but there's, you, know, you think, wait a minute. If you're going to do that, why didn't you do that and then Dirty Laundry, right? And that's very true. Why didn't I do that and then dirty laundry? Well, by dirty laundrying first, that leaves me with more credits on that run. If I would have seen, say, a Jackson Howard, maybe I would have trashed it. Or like a Bernice, if I would have trashed that instead of, uh, right? If I would have installed self-modifying code, then turned it into data sucker, I would have been down to two credits, used both of them for dirty laundry. And then, ooh, Beal. Yep, just going to raid HQ with this data sucker. Early data sucker tokens. Very important. Very important. Um, then I would have hit HQ with no credits and uh, would not have been able to trash things that I saw. Even, say, a melange, right? So, very important to have money when you access for trashing things. Okay. Get some ice for HQ. He draws a bunch of cards. We saw some agendas there. I'm also going to draw some cards. And we're going to hit R&D. Oh, shit, toll booth. It's the booth. Yep, I lose three credits and I can't break it. Well, dang it. <laughs> At least he had to spend eight, so that's a good deal. And dropping a free clone chip. The clone chip is great because there's an SMC in the trash, so if I can get some money, uh, I can basically get any program I want with clone chip SMC, and if I throw out some other programs into the trash, I can, I can get those too. Okay, what's he going to do here? More sweeps week. Um, 
I think I only had four cards in my hand. He asked how many cards I had. I said I had four. He says, oh, okay, I'll take four credits. I'm like, I said I had four. <laughs> you get three credits. Three credits is still good with Sweeps Week. I will play Sweeps Week for just the three credits. That's a beanstalk. That's great. Uh, for if, it's, if they have three or fewer cards in my hand, then um, maybe you can think about holding on to your Sweeps Week. Right? And I think that's that's the thing, right? Is if they have four or five, Sweep Seek is a good deal. If they have less than four, it's a bad deal. It's the exact opposite of Scorched Earth. Okay, so Run HQ. There is that wall of static that we have seen so often. Going to get some money. Going to get some cards. Going to throw out this Deus Ex. I'm pretty sure I don't need it. And if I do need it, I can uh, bring it up with that clone ship. So... He's defending his remote. He's putting something in there. And he's got money. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I gotta be able to get in there. And right now I got $3 to my name. I run it. It's a wall of static. Bonk. Yep. Bonk. But here comes the MVP. The card people do not think is good. The card I put in this deck because Wraparound exists and is a thing. The card that wins me this game. <laughs> Or at least wins me this run. Inti! Inti! See, people are shitting on Inti and Pipeline and these other cards. That, ooh, yeah, there we go. Two data suckers, right? They shit on these cards like Inti and Pipeline because, well, the strength is low. Boosting them high is expensive, right? And... But they break for one, just like every other icebreaker, right? And they're cheap to install, which means you can just bust them out like I just did. Like, boom, here we go. I didn't even lose any money to install this. Really strong. Really strong with Data Sucker. Because basically, if you have an Inti, every Data Sucker counter is suddenly now worth two credits, not one credit, right? So it's like, if you play Inti Pipeline, Data Sucker is even stronger. Uh, but then again, getting wiped is even worse. <laughs> um... But yeah, NT plus two data suckers and one credit. Whoosh, walk right through that wall static. Right through. And it costs nothing to install. If I tried to bring out an Atman right there, could not have afforded it. Well, because uh, I'm Kate, I could have spent all my... Maybe I could have afforded it. Okay. Okay, so I think I drew a card and took a bunch of money. A little dangerous because he installed something back there, but... All right, anonymous tip. He likes to draw cards. Hedge fund. He likes to get money. Cards and money. He's just bringing everything out. Install. Uh-oh. That remote is now doubled up. Hmm... Usually when you see that, I'm thinking San San Bernice, right? That's what I'm thinking. See now why now last turn, remember I took a whole I took three credits. Why? Because I know in my hand I have Test Run Scavenge. So I could bring that Femme to bear. I wanted to bring the Femme to bear, Test Run Scavenge R and D, run R and D, run R and D. Right? But I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that in this situation. Right. To break, to get into that remote, I'm going to need two data suckers, maybe run archives twice, plus a credit. All right, so that's two clicks. Install, test run the fem is a third click. I need a click to run, so I'm not going to be able to scavenge the fem if I use it, a test run fem to get into the remote. So what I'm actually going to do is install a data sucker and run archives once. So that gets me both the counters in same two clicks, but it lets me use Kate's ability before the test run of the Femme. And I get another data sucker on the table, which is really useful, especially when I... Now I can, like, run ar archives, run HQ for one credit, right? Because I'll have the two data suckers. Okay, I'll Femme the Mystery Ice. And last click, run the remote. If that's a Bernice or something... And, uh, yeah, can't blame someone for reading Inti. <laughs> Not a card. It's a card. Get used to seeing it because people are, shapers are going to play it. Um, the 
against your uh, wraparounds. Yeah. Because wraparound exists, NT is now better. I only have one NT in the deck. I just happen to draw it. Okay. I have three credits, so I'm prepared to take two subroutines on that first ice and one of the back ice. If there's a sand sand back there, I can't trash it, though. Okay, so he doesn't even res the first ice. Two data suckers and a credit. I'll access that one. That's sand sand. Oh, can't trash it. Okay, what's the other one? Is it Bernice? Oh, it's not. Wow, this game has quickly become six to nothing. Um... And Fem sadly goes back to top. No clicks left to scavenge it. Uh, I think that ice out in front is Roto Turret. So if I had just test run the Fem with click one, put the Fem on the wall of static and run, I could have gotten in and then scavenged the Fem over to the toll booth. But how was I to know? You know, what if that front ice was Enigma? I didn't know what it was. How was I supposed to know? Then I would have been just bonk, lose a click and end the run, and then he scores that. Well, I guess he maybe could have scored the character assassination, but yeah. That's not something I could have uh, could have allowed. He's throwing out the wall of static. I don't know why he's throwing out the wall of static. He paid three to res it. And yeah, I can get through it for one credit, but I need two data suckers to get through it. It's not easy. I guess it saves him on the install of the second ice. Um, one credit. All right, so getting some daily cast going on, trying to get my money back. I can't I have any money right now. Um, I can't trash the sand sand. I can't, can't do anything because I'm poor. I spent it all getting these six points by the thinnest of margins. Anonymous tip. He's drawn all the cards. Woo, there's the Astro script. Come on, baby. If I touch any of those cards, I win. And he's icing up HQ. Yeah, he realizes that, you know, he's got the agendas in hand. He just anonymous tipped a whole bunch. Even though he's got six cards in there, it's it's dense. If he didn't put that ice on HQ right there, I absolutely would have run archives, got my two data suckers, run HQ. Maybe I would have run archives, run archives, run HQ. You know, run archives once, then I run HQ for a credit, but then I get my data suckers back. So then I can just, you know, run archives, run HQ three times, and that would have been game. But he got nice, so he got nice. Can't really do anything about any of this right now. Going to infiltrate for two credits because I'm that poor. And there's really nothing for me to infiltrate, right? There's two ice on the remote. Infiltrating one of them wouldn't help too much. Reza Sansan and... Master script, install. Oh, and he's going to use a shipment from Sand Sand. Boom, there it is. I'm in trouble. Eh, I mean, I have six points. I'm not really in trouble, but, you know, he's got an Astro script. That's, that's worth, you know, more points. This can get really dangerous here. He drew a lot of cards with those anonymous tips, and I only have... Uh, one Astro in my pile. So there's two more out there. Okay, so here's some inefficiency that occurs. I'm going to put out a Grimoire. I'm going to Parasite the Toll Booth. It gets one from the Grimoire. See, I kind of wanted to like take out the Toll Booth and hit R&D in the same turn, but I just wasn't able to do it. Um... So this is, I don't know, what what could I have done better here? Install, I guess I could have thrown out the Parasite. I could have drawn the cards, taken credits, thrown the Parasite in the garbage, installed the Grimoire, right? Um, well, install, you know, install, like, draw, draw, take a credit, install Grimoire, throw a Parasite out of my hand, and then, at the end of his turn, clone ship the Parasite onto the toll booth. Uh-oh, two Astro Scripts. This is really dangerous now. It's like, oh, it's four to six. No, he's got two Astro Tokens. It's like, this game is over in one or two turns. Okay, so his turn starts. The Parasite gains one. Uh, I blow... I have to still pay the toll booth when I encounter it, but I blow it up completely. Okay. That makes up for the 
Okay, I see a card. It's a Jackson Howard that I cannot trash. Um, I realize I'm in a bad situation right now. All right? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? All I did so far, I think, was actually run archives, run R&D. So, or just, just run R&D. I drew a card, top deck indexing. That is exactly, I was like, man, I need indexing right now. I got three in my deck. Draw, top deck, indexing, and yeah, agenda. I did have a click to get it because, all yeah, all I did was, I think, on that turn was run R&D after the... Uh, no, oh, let me check that. Yeah, that turn was that turn was run Arca. That was turn was just run R and D. I already had the data suckers, and then uh, I paid the three for the toll booth. I only saw the Jackson. I drew a card, got an indexing, played it, then used my final click to steal the agenda I saw on the naked R and D. All right, so I barely take game one. He was about to win it. With his two Astroscript tokens. Um, I've had bad indexings all day, but uh, really the game winner there, as I said before, was Inti. Inti got me through early and often with Data Sucker, right, through those walls of static, um, with barely any money, right? You're going to see a, a common theme here um, in this game as well of the runner making runs successfully with barely any money uh, but managing to get you know enough accesses to do some damage so i can mbn as well as you but my deck's a little bigger prepare to be traced bro prepare to be traced okay Moving right along. This was actually pretty fast. A nice. I like to play fast. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. You don't want to play too fast that you mess up and make mistakes and don't think carefully about things. But you don't want to play for the whole time, right? Then you start to feel the pressure of, oh, what if time runs out? Then we're screwed, right? That's not good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm constantly in during tournaments like, how much time is left? Oh my gosh, how much time is left? Oof. One of my friends got a timer. I think I might get one as well to uh, to set up. So, I mean, it won't be exact. It's not the official timer of the round, but you can sort of look at it to get an idea of how much time is left in the round and at least ease your mind um, about, you know, or legitimately start to worry because you are taking too long. Do I... He's Andromeda. Do I mulligan to get sweep, sweep, sweep? Do I? I think I've got a hand of one ice, but the rest of the hand is kind of okay. Um, and there's an Astro script there. Thinking about keeping it, yeah. Get a Jackson. Um, I think I actually end up keeping this hand. He's got two account siphons, dirty laundry, uh, all kinds of stuff in there. Okay, so... Very interesting. Um, I keep my hand. That is, you know, middling. I'm just afraid, right? This is the last game. If I win this game, I, I end, end the tournament with one loss. So I'm not going to... I can't mulligan, court mulligan when I've got one agenda. I might draw a whole bunch. And I top deck an ice on my mandatory draw. Uh, Beanstalk. For some reason, I short myself a credit. Um, I only have seven. I should have eight. I should have eight credits on an install install beanstalk. Um, let's see if, if shorting myself a credit matters. Okay, so he's gonna dirty laundry archives. That's the first one of the first things I did in the, in the previous game. Pretty similar here. All right, what's gonna happen? Sneak door. Okay. Sneak door is actually a big enemy of my deck. Account siphon. He's like, uh, are you sure? You only got like one click after that. He's like, oh, actually, I guess he got confused. He thought he was gonna account siphon through the sneak door. It's like, nope, can't do that. 
Um, so what are you going to do? You're going to play your card. He's going to use the sneak door. Okay. I didn't think he would run on turn one, being Andromeda, but there you go. And, of course, he takes Master Screw. And he runs again. That's a Jackson Howard. Can't trash it. Or won't. And that's it. He's going to throw cards out. What's he throwing out? A same old thing and an account siphon. All right. Sure. Thanks, dude. You don't need those. You don't need those at all. You, you throw those away. Jackson Howard, let's draw cards. Need some ice. Install, draw two, and... Yeah, block that sneak door. Sneak door no more. Okay. It's going down in Andromeda's universe. Run HQ. Boom. Wrap around. Where's your inti? Sneak door. Draco. Trace for Draco. You can't beat that, Trace. So you take a tag and end the run. Both. Draco's so good. Wish I would have drawn that Draco earlier, though. Uh, put it on HQ. Draco is the ultimate account siphon defense, because if they account siphon you, you can just dump all your money into the Draco strength, and there's nothing they can do about it. Then, anytime they try to run HQ, this is an unbreakable, ridiculous Draco in the way. Sure, it's only Trace 2, but your MBN, you boost that to Trace 4. Uh, they're taking an extra tag, ending the run, or they're paying a lot to get in there to beat the Trace. Um, you know, plus, if that's a, if the Draco is so strong right on HQ and they account siphon you from then on forward you can dump your money into the Draco trace um, which will make them take a tag and end the run or uh, they'll have to pay that you know and then if they get through there's no point in siphoning because you have money left okay as a corroder wraparound is now useless and account siphon all right take my money bro take it uh, I don't have anything I can spend it on even if I had a sand sand on the table, which I don't think I do, um, I would have needed one more credit to dump my money into resing it. So there you have it. Okay, he ignored the remote. He just account siphoned me, took my money, and then cleared the tags. Jackson Howard. He doesn't seem to mind that I have this Jackson Howard. I'm going to keep using it. Taking money. And installing an ice, right? I have no. He confirms that I have no money, and I'm like, yes, I have no money whatsoever. Why do I not care that I have no money whatsoever? Because my ice be pop up windows. That's why. Because <laughs> I got pop up windows. Run an R&D. Pop-up window. Boom. Credit. He accesses and... Nope, no score. Lucky me. Run my remote. Um, no res. This is last click, I think. Bernice, Trace 7. He's got to read Bernice. So if he pays... He has a link because he's a drama. If he pays six credits, which he doesn't have, then he can... Uh, Bernice will just die with no tag, no nothing. If he pays... Uh, or he can take the tag by losing the trace, which he does, and then he'll have to pay three to trash Bernice uh, if he wants to, which he does. So he's got a tag, and it's my turn. Uh, I could close the counts if I have one, or I think I might have one, but he's only got two credits. Why would I close the counts? Two measly credits. I'm going to green level. I'm going to get my machine rolling here. If he's already used up two account siphons, so... Yeah, well, he threw one away and played the other one. He's only got two points, even though it is one of Master Scripts. I'm I'm ready to make a move. I just need more, a little bit more ice, a little bit more real ice, so we can't inside job my remote. Maybe a sand sand and some money. I'm a little bit poor. Hopefully he'll run my pop-up windows a few more times, which I can afford to let him do, because he's only got two points right now. All right, we got some ice there. Okay, remote is now safe from inside job. As long as the back ice isn't a barrier, because <laughs> he's got a corrode. Mm -hmm. 
what's going to happen here? He's still tagged, by the way. I've kept, I've kept a tag on my side. He runs HQ. Oops. Pop-up window. Money. Look how much money I'm making on these pop-up windows. So he spends two, and he gets all the way through. One for pop-up window, one for to break wraparound with his corroder. Oh, he got my veal. My veals. No. Now it's trouble. Now I don't really want to let him score anything else. <laughs> And he's going to shut down Draco. Um, I don't know why he didn't just shut down Wraparound instead. He's going to regret that later. It's actually dangerous to shut down a Draco, right? I mean, that Draco had no counters on it. But if you shut, if you derez um, a Draco that has power counters, those power counters remain on the Draco. And when the Corp reses the Draco again, if they do, they can put more power counters on it. So you're basically giving them two opportunities to boost up the strength of the Draco. Not, and it's only one to res. That's not an ice you want to shut down. Runs R&D. And uh-oh. It's, ooh, at least it's just a breaking news. But that's still bad. That means he's within one agenda of winning. It doesn't matter if it's a one or a two. But... I get my Astro script, so yeah, <laughs> it's five to two, but my two comes with a with a magic token, which means it counts for a little more than two. Runs R and D. I think that was a closed accounts he saw, maybe. I think he's removed his tag by now. He has no money. Takes one credit. Throws out his Katie Jones. I guess he knows it's going to get tagged and he'll get he'll just lose it. Or he's already at five points, so there isn't going to be that much time left in the game for him to use Katie Jones. You know, to take two, install it, fill it up. And he's got a... Right. Okay, so defend R&D a little bit there. And install the remote. So, And I got a pile of money now, thanks to all this pop-up window running and such. He's going to forge my R&D ice. That is an enigma. I will gladly res it. Uh, I'm just slightly upset you didn't run into it and lose a click. But that's okay. You cannot get in there. Run archives. Why did you do that? You know there's a Draco here. And you have no money. So I'm, oh, so I'm, once I, I'm like, oh, actually not boosting that trace. The trace two is enough. You get a tag and in the run. But I'm not going to close your zero accounts. Why would I close your zero accounts? Yeah. It was definitely a misplay shutting down that Draco and then running into it when you have no money. And I guess he, he you know, hasn't seen Draco a lot. Jackson, find me them cards. And take some money. He's got one credit, two credit. Run HQ, pop up window, break. So he spends his two credits to get all the way in. He's got no money, accesses, and that's game. Oh, see, that looked like it totally dominated, and he sort of did, right? I mean, it's it's seven to seven to two, right? But look at that. Uh, the game was actually three turns away. Right? The next turn, I would have scored that Beal that was already on the table. Turn after that, I would have scored the Beal he stole for the win using my Astro Strip token. The turn after that, breaking news. So, even though the score was, you know, two, well, seven to two, right? I got crushed. I was actually three turns away from winning. That's how dangerous fast advance is, right? Five points, three turns. Boom, boom, boom. And there was really nothing he could have done to stop it. Um,. You know, he just he got in to the server. He got in. HQ is really the only place he can get into. He got in there. He got in there often. Um, 
And he stole my agendas from there, uh, right before I was about to use them. You know, the, the early sneak door was also, uh, and I think you get some some early R&D score, I think also just through the only the pop-up window alone. It's weird, because the pop-up window gave me all the money that I used, but at the same time, um, I wasn't really able to get enough ice to defend. And in a way, that sneak door, you know, forced me to put that Draco over on archives. If he hadn't done that, that Draco, if you didn't have a sneak door, that Draco was going on, and not so early, right? Uh, that Draco was going on HQ for sure. And that Draco was on HQ, he wasn't getting into anything. Um, so even though the sneak door only got used once, in a way, that sneak door actually uh, won this game uh, for him. Uh, if not for it, I would have been able to defend, you know, the whole extra piece of ice for defending the other servers. Yeah. All right, that was the store championship. Uh, came in second place. Some other guy only had one loss on the day.